Assalamu alaikum. So let's start the lecture. Uh, today we're going to continue with our discussion on energy bands and we're going to look at some very interesting aspects which are revealed by the quantum picture. Once again I would like to remind you, you of the classical Drude's model of conduction which we discussed in our previous lecture uh, and the model suggests that we have fixed ions, positively charged ions and these ions must be fixed in their positions at zero kelvins and surrounding these ions there is a swarm of electrons and these electrons are moving with certain velocities and once you apply an electric field the electrons pick up energy their velocity increases until they strike or collide with a positively charged ion. This interaction of the electron with the ion is given the name scattering. The exact mechanism is very complicated because you have a negatively charged electron coming in close contact with a positively charged ion so electrostatically both of them must must be attracted to one another and but this exact scattering mechanism by the way is not important so it's a complicated phenomenon but what happens is that the electron comes and comes in proximity of this positively charged ion it changes its direction which means that the velocity changes so there are scattering events and if <coughs> E is electric field then the force that is acting on an electron is minus E E this is the force on an electron in the presence of a magnetic field. We're discussing metals right now and we're looking at the classical picture. And as we discussed the other day, there's an acceleration for the electrons which is given by minus E m into E. And as a result of this acceleration, the velocity goes up. The velocity changes with time and is given by if the initial velocity is zero, the new velocity would become acceleration times the time minus e m and let's start dealing with magnitudes minus e m capital E and a time and what time do we use we can use any time but if on average if on average it takes tau seconds for the electrons to make a collision then this is on average the velocity that this electron acquires but tau is a scattering time this is called the scattering time the average time in seconds between two successive collisions since this is a statistical event there will be a spread in the times between which collisions occur electron ion ko collide karega theek hai it changes its direction starts moving in another direction its velocity goes on increasing until it scatters with another ion there's a time between two successive collisions it could be one nanoseconds so when it makes a collision it then starts increasing its velocity again until it undergoes the next collision and the time for the for the next collision to take place may be half a nanosecond so what is the average time between collisions we have to come up with an average time between collisions and that average time is called the scattering time but doesn't the direction after the collision matter it does matter that's why i'm saying it's an average time g so क्योंकि जो इनिशियल वेलोसिटी है वो पॉजिटिव डायरेक्शन में भी है नेगेटिव डायरेक्शन में भी है ठीक है थर्मल वेलोसिटी इन द एब्सेंस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड द वेलोसिटी कैन पॉइंट इन एनी डायरेक्शन एंड सिंस आफ्टर स्कैटरिंग द इलेक्ट्रॉन कैन स्टार्ट मूविंग इन एनी डायरेक्शन इट लाइक्स देयरफॉर द एवरेज ऑफ दैट क्वांटिटी इज जीरो द ओनली थिंग दैट मैटर्स इज व्हाट इज द एक्सेलरेशन अपॉन द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड एंड दैट एक्सेलरेशन हैज अ डायरेक्शन that direction 
the average acceleration is in this direction because we are talking about negatively charged electrons. So this is the average velocity. It's also called the drift velocity, VD. In typical metals, copper, aluminum, it's a, a few millimeters per second. Now, you also know that given a drift velocity, you can find the current density, J. What is the current density? The current density is the charge on an electron with a negative sign, the number of electrons per unit volume, Ne, times the drift velocity. Okay, you electricity magnetism in the Okay. No? It's hai na. So, given the drift velocity, you can find the current density. The units of current density are amperes per meter squares. The number of electrons per unit volume. Okay, the number of electrons per unit volume. And let's put in the value of Vd. E square over the mass of an electron. N E tau E. This is the current density. But what is Ohm's law? V equals I R or I equals V over R. Is there another form of the Ohm's law as well? Is there a relationship between the current density and the electric field as well? V equals IR, right? V, what is I? I is J times the cross-sectional area A. What is R? R is the resistivity length over A. Length of the material, the cross-sectional area of the material, the A's can cancel out. V over L equals J, the resistivity. What is V over L? You have a voltage difference between the two ends of the conductor. What is V over L? It's an electric field. law, it's a classical law, could be written as V equals IR and you could also write this as E equals J rho. This is an alternative form of Ohm's law. This is Ohm's law. There is no difference. Or J equals 1 over resistivity into the electric field. And if you compare this expression, the Ohm's law, with what we've derived here, the resistivity is simply mass E square N E tau. This is the resistivity of a material. So the resistivity of a material depends upon the mass of an electron the concentration of electrons, that is how many electrons do we have per unit volume and the average time between collisions. Higher the average time between collisions, the smaller will be the resistivity. If electrons are more time in collisions, it means that the conductivity is far better. The resistivity will be lower. So, higher the average scattering time, lower will be the resistivity. And what is the converse or the inverse of resistivity called? It's called the conductivity. Sigma. Sigma is just E square N E tau over the mass of an electron. So this is the classical model. Alright. Now the average time between collisions should be given by Everything is flowing very nicely. And this is the classical picture of conductivity. Now the average time between collisions means that you have an average distance between collisions, L average, divided by the average velocity. 
<laughs> okay so l average is the average distance between collisions it's called the mean free path this is called the mean free path but what is the average velocity if the electrons are at a temperature t can you tell me what the average velocity of the electrons should be if the solid is at a temperature capital t what should the average velocity of the electrons be classically you will equate the kinetic energy half mv average squared with 3 over 2 kbt so this means that the average velocity is proportional to the under root of temperature and this means that the resistivity is uh, varies inversely as tau or okay or the conductivity is directly proportional to the to the time which is directly inversely proportional to the average velocity so the conductivity is inversely proportional to the under root of time uh, under root of temperature theek hai because the average velocity is proportional to the temperature square root since this is proportional to the square root of temperature the conductivity will be inversely proportional to the square root of temperature which means that the resistivity will be proportional to the square root of temperature classically therefore if we want to make a plot between the temperature and the resistivity the temperature and the resistivity this is what we should observe a square root dependence <coughs> because rho is now proportional to the under root of the temperature this is the classical prediction and at zero kelvins the resistivity should go to zero ye classical prediction hai 19th century ki prediction hai lekin when you measure the resistivity of materials or metals the resistivity never goes to zero at zero kelvins the plot between resistivity and temperature looks like this it's a linear relationship for materials for metals especially the resistivity increases linearly with temperature and at low temperatures there is a residual resistivity the resistivity never goes to zero otherwise you'll get a superconductor so this is the experimental plot for metals this is what experiments tell us and they don't match the classical prediction now how does one show that the resistivity really depends linearly on temperature if you have a pure metal this is what you would get if you have an impure metal the residual resistivity goes up so this is an impure metal whereas this is a pure metal but there is always some residual resistivity and the resistance is directly proportional to the temperature not to the inverse uh, square root of the temperature so the classical picture breaks down somewhere and where does the classical picture break down the classical picture actually breaks down here so we've used this relationship a classical kinetic energy and the equipartition of energy which we studied from from the black body radiation this picture breaks down somewhere the reason is that when we talk about electrons we're talking about fermions and fermions as we all know obey the pauli exclusion principle theek hai ye baat yaad hai na pauli exclusion principle so the energy of the electrons is in fact much higher in a metal than what is predicted but classically 
because classically uh, or oh, sorry quantumly we really have a band so there is a valence band then there is a gap we are talking about conductors now there is a gap eg in which there is no energy level the valence band is completely filled for a conductor and it's partial the conduction band is partially filled so this is the conduction band this is the fermi level and this band comprises finely spaced levels a large number of them aur humne dekha tha ki wo bahut kareeb kareeb hai so there is a large number of levels in the band and electrons classically all of them would like to go to the lower state to the ground state that's what you expect classically but we know that quantumly these are fermions and they must obey the pauli exclusion principle so they tend to move away from one another and if two electrons have the same energy their spins must be opposite because that ensures that their four quantum numbers are not all identical so these electrons have to be filled up from one level to the next and as they fill up their energy goes up and that is why the average energy of the electron in this system in this metal is much higher and we cannot use that relationship so we can estimate what the average what this fermi energy is in fact and this is something we'll do today but conduction takes place in a conductor i repeat that because there is a conduction band which is partially filled and there are electrons near the fermi level and there are available energy levels which are unfilled so you apply an electric field and the electrons near the fermi level they can gain energy and move to higher energy levels and they can move higher because the neighboring levels are unfilled they can accommodate electrons theek hai all right so this <coughs> relationship tells us this diagram tells us two things the first thing is that the energy of the electrons in a metal is much higher than classically predicted क्लासिकल प्रोडिक्शन ये कहती है कि ऑल दी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विल गोइंग टू द लोएस्ट एनर्जी लेवल बट नाउ दीज इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर इन फैक्ट गोइंग अपवर्ड्स इन एनर्जी बिकॉज दीज लोअर लेवल्स कैन नॉट एकोमोडेट मोर देन टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स सो द एनर्जी ऑफ द सिस्टम इज इंक्रीजिंग दैट इज वाई द मैक्सिमम एनर्जी ऑफ एनी इलेक्ट्रॉन इन दिस सिस्टम इज ई एफ एंड यू कैन राइट ई एफ इक्वल्स थ्री ओवर टू के बी Times some effective temperature, which is called the Fermi temperature. देखो ये एक effective temperature electrons का. It's not the room temperature, or it's not the temperature which the solid is placed. It's some effective temperature. Let me finish, please. So this is some effective temperature called the Fermi temperature. Will this temperature be higher than room temperature, or will it be lower, or will it be the same? Higher. It's going to be much higher. So, if room temperature is at three hundred Kelvin, this Fermi temperature is really at three thousand Kelvin's. The average energy can be ten times higher in a solid than what is classically predicted. So, imagine a solid that is at a temperature of three hundred Kelvin, which is at room temperature. But the electrons in the system, the most energetic electrons in the system, because of the Pauli exclusion principle, they really have an effective temperature of three thousand Kelvin's. which is half the temperature of the surface of the sun it's a very high temperature theek hai
probably you can achieve a fusion reaction at this temperature. So these extra energies and extra effective temperatures come about because of quantum mechanics, because of the Pauli exclusion principle. These are not real temperatures of course, these are effective temperatures. It appears as if the electron is at 3000 kelvins. This is an effective temperature. So this is calculated after measuring the energy? Right. So you have a Fermi energy, you can measure the Fermi energy, calculate it, I, we will calculate it today and you can equate it to some K times temperature. Every energy is equal to K times an effective temperature and this effective temperature is 3000 Kelvin. Effective ka matlab ye hai ki if you put a thermometer inside the solid and which can measure the temperature of the electrons, it will of what temperature would you get? It, you would get 3000 kelvins. But no such thermometer really exists by the way. So this is one uh, prediction from quantum mechanics. The other prediction from quantum mechanics is that the resistivity does not depend on the square root of temperature. It really depends upon the temperature. And we will prove that later. But for now, I would like I would like to tell a little bit about what's the origin of resistivity in the quantum picture. Classical picture mein resistivity kahan se aari hai? Pehle aap mujhe ye batao, bataiye. Right. Collisions of electrons with nuclei or with nuclei plus valence electrons. Or collision ka kya matlab? Hame nahi pata. The mechanism of collusion is unclear, it's very complicated. Now, we want to look at the quantum picture of resistivity, the quantum origins of resistivity. And I will give a very qualitative presentation now. And if you take the course on condensed matter physics, then you will study this quantitatively but now I would like to give you a qualitative picture but I can take a question sorry kya cheez E effective T effective dekho ye measure nahi karte mein sirf ye keh ki you have an energy and that energy you can correspond a temperature to it it's not a real temperature you can correspond a temperature to it and that temperature is could be 3000 Kelvin, you cannot measure it. If, if you had the classical system, you had a gas of electrons with this much energy, then that those electrons can only exist at 3000 Kelvins. Do you now understand? Okay. Abuto. So in superconductors what happens, we'll, we'll have a lecture on superconductors as well. In superconductors the resistance of metals goes down linearly and at a certain point which is called the critical temperature it suddenly goes to zero and exactly zero. And this cannot be explained classically. And this can only be explained quantumly. Wo is relationship satisfy nahi karta na? So, what is quantum explanation? Hai ki how does a superconductor work? If you have time, someday we'll study how a superconductor works. But if you can come up with a theory that explains the origin of superconductivity, I can bet you will get a Nobel Prize for it. Because there is no theory, and people are looking out for theories that can explain the origin of superconductivity in, in all classes of materials. You can explain superconductivity in metals and other normal materials, but not in the widest range of materials. So superconductivity is a beautiful phenomenon that can only be explained quantum mechanically. lasers Lasers, in lasers you have photons. And what are photons? They are bosons. So, you have a large number of photons coming out of a laser and they are bosons. And two bosons can have the same quantum state. So a third boson can have the same quantum state as the other two. So all the bosons, all the photons have the same quantum state. Right? 
right so a laser is a comprises photons which are bosons that is why you can make coherent light in superconductivity the fermions which are electrons which are responsible for conductivity they start acting as bosons because two electrons combine together to form a pair of electrons called a cooper pair and that is then a boson and all the electrons which become bosons they can get together in the same quantum state and they are all moving together and that is why the, the ions cannot offer resistance to this marching army of electrons and the superconductor starts conducting super in a super fashion that is without resistance <coughs> there's a third phenomenon called super fluidity every fluid has a viscosity every fluid water has a viscosity honey has a viscosity every fluid nitrogen liquid nitrogen has a viscosity but at certain temperatures certain liquids become super fluid they flow without resistance so all of these exotic phenomena they can only be explained by quantum mechanics and that's the real power of modern physics it has changed the way we look at our universe and it has also changed the way we look at resistivity so what happens in when we want to start describing the quantum origins of resistivity is now the electron we know is a wave and the wave is moving in a core of fixed positive charges so when you have a fixed positive charge what will it do it will produce an electric potential and what will the electric potential look like out of the out of the charge out of the charge it will be a coulombic uh, interaction so the potential energy will be minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught sum z e square over r it will be of this form the potential energy so it will be like a spherical well dekho jab humne hydrogen atom study kiya tha wo ek spherical potential energy ban rahi thi na it's like a well in three dimensions so now you have a neighboring proton a, a neighboring nucleus it will have a well of its own another nucleus a fourth nucleus so you have a large number of wells now the electron is as if it is a soldier walk walking in a jungle of wells ek electron hai jo ek wave hai and you can associate a wave function with the electron An electron is just a matter wave. Now the matter wave is moving through the through this assembly of wells, and it can scatter, it can tunnel, it can tr be transmitted, it can be reflected, depending upon the relative energy of this electron and the potential energy of the well. Agreed. So now the conduction of electrons quantumly can only be explained by treating the electrons as waves. They are matter waves. They are wave packets and they are moving through a series of wells. And if you would like to simplify this picture, we can draw we can draw rectangular wells instead of spherical wells just for simplification. just for simplification energy ka bas baseline change ho rahi hai farak nahi padega so now you have an electron which is just a wave it sees a barrier it sees a barrier it can be reflected or it can be transmitted so there will be a reflected wave and there can be a transmitted wave a reflected wave and a transmitted wave so these reflections decrease the transmitted wave and these reflections cause resistivity or scattering ho sakta hai tunneling bhi tunneling bhi hoti hai
nucleosity tunneling. So it all depends upon the relative energy of the electron E and U0. So this is the picture that I would like you to fix in your minds. This is, this is how resistivity is taking place. And the other thing, there are certain, another way to look at bands in fact. There are certain energies of the electron, there are certain energies of the electron where this reflected wave <coughs> destructively interferes with this reflected wave. All the reflected waves destructively interfere. Okay? When all the reflected waves destructively interfere, there will be no reflected wave. And therefore, therefore conduction will take place. So, so there are certain energies for which conduction is allowed. And there are certain energies for which conduction does, is not allowed. For example, it's possible that this transmitted wave this destructively interferes with this reflected wave. So that there is no transmission at all. And if you are in this energy regime, no conduction can take place. Therefore, there are certain bands in energy for which conduction does take place and certain regions where conduction does not take place and they are called gaps. Now this is a reflected wave. Oh sorry, a transmitted wave. And the bottom one is a deflected wave from the next barrier. Now this transmitted wave in can interfere with this reflected wave. And they can destructively interfere. When they destructively interfere, there will be no transmission. Hence, there will be no conduction. And that can only take place when the energy of the incoming electron is in a precise range. <coughs> and when the energy of the electron is in that range, we are in this region. No conduction can take place. Or we are in this region. This is a valence band. No conduction can take place. And conduction does take place only when the energy is in a certain region. That's why we have these bands. And that's why we have the gaps. So one has to look at the waves as being scattered uh, electrons as being scattered waves. And how does resistivity... There are two contributions to resistivity. One contribution is called lattice vibrations. And lattice vibrations means that the positively charged ions, they are not fixed in position. The positive charge ions are vibrating about their mean position. So let's draw a conceptual picture for this. Look, it's just qualitative. Hai. Ye quantitative discussion nahi kar so start enjoying this. There's a new, no numericals here. It's all qualitative. It's all physics, no mathematics. So these are positively charged ions and they are connected by springs in a way because there is electrostatic repulsion between the ions and one ion exerts a force on a neighboring ion so you can draw a lot of springs I have drawn a two dimensional solid but really it has to be a three dimensional solid So this is a conceptual picture of a solid and you have ions outside and inside as well and you have a three dimensional network. <coughs> right. So now when the temperature increases the oscillation of these charges increases. So this positively charged ion can move in different directions. So when it moves in different directions, the collusional cross section increases. The area that it presents to an electron for collusion goes up. 
and this is directly proportional to temperature that's why the resistivity actually depends linearly on temperature so as these lattice vibrations increase the position of these positive ions from their mean positions is disturbed and the resistivity goes up what happens in this quantum picture is that the position of these wells changes so if I draw a diagram for a solid with lattice vibrations this is what I would get the positioning of these wells of these barriers is constantly changing and therefore constructive interference becomes less likely destructive interference becomes more likely and when this happens the resistivity goes up so one aspect of resistivity is lattice vibrations higher the temperature higher the lattice vibrations and higher will be the resistivity that is why as the temperature goes up the resistivity goes up linearly because the collisional cross section increases as we increase the temperature the second origin of resistivity is defects देखो और क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स में आपको पता है हर चीज को क्वांटाइज करने का शौक होता है हमें तो लैटिस वाइब्रेशन भी क्वांटाइज होती हैं और इनको कह देते हैं फोनॉन्स फोनॉन्स सो वन मैकेनिज्म ऑफ रेजिस्टिविटी इज थ्रू फोनॉन्स दैट इज द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स गिव अवे देयर एनर्जी टू फोनॉन्स Phonons are these imaginary particles which carry the lattice vibrations and they heat up the material. The other mechanism are the defects. And defects also lead to a variation in this neat arrangement of wells. And what are defects? Let me give you an example. So this is a crystal of a metal and I'm showing the positively charged cores. Baat sunne? Everything is neat and very orderly here. But here I can have an impurity atom. So this is one kind of defect, impurity. Here is another kind of defect that is everything is very neat and orderly but suddenly there is a vacancy. So I can have a vacancy. Everything is neat and orderly suddenly here the orientation of the crystal is changing. This is called a grain boundary. And you can see all of these effects in electron microscope images. So you can have point defects, you can have vacancies, you can have dislocations. All of these uh, phenomena are different kinds of defects which lead to a randomness in these scattering quantum wells and all of them lead to resistivity. All right. So this is what I want. G. अब देखो ये qualitative है vacancy से भी इसी तरह की ये arrangement disturb हो जाएगी. This neat orderly arrangement of the quantum wells will be disturbed. So these are different kinds of defects. G. ठीक है क्लासिकली भी ठीक है ये कि ये 
कॉन्ट्राडिक्शन नहीं है मतलब जिस तरह हमने अल्ट्रावायलेट के टास्क करते हैं उनको कहा था ना कि कॉन्ट्राडिक्शन है फर्मी एनर्जी कभी इन्फिनिटी नहीं होगी ठीक है वो वो अल्ट्रावायलेट कैटास्ट्रोफी नहीं होगा नहीं आती ना क्योंकि फर्मी एनर्जी एक फाइनाइट एनर्जी है तो फाइनाइट टेम्परेचर होगा जो भी फर्मी टेम्परेचर है जी कुछ भी हो सकता है दोनों चीजें हो सकती हैं अच्छा वी हैव फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स टू गो सो आई वुड लाइक टू कवर लॉट ऑफ ग्राउंड टूडे सिक्स थर्टी पे शुरू हुई है क्लास एट सेवन एवरी वन ट्यूटोरियल इन फिजिक्स ओके सेवन थर्टी पे शुरू होना है ट्यूटोरियल अच्छा सेवन थर्टी टू एट थर्टी कर लो वन नाइन में इतनी सकत कहाँ की इतनी देर बैठ सकें सो विल ओके आई आई टेक आई टेक फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स एंड देन यू कैन हैव द ट्यूटोरियल वो कहाँ पे वो किसने ले किसका वो भी यहीं पे वाह ओके मुदसर यू हैव थर्टी मिनट्स देन तो आप ही का क्विज है अनशेड्यूल्ड क्लास है चलें अभी ये आठ बजे तक तो चलें ना सो आई फिनिश इन फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स and then you can arrange another tutorial some other day perhaps is that possible but early early because it's i have to give you one more assignment and i have to discuss about assignments as well theek hai one thing i would like to talk about is the origin of pauli's principle Now I draw two diagrams on the blackboard, and these are only. Don't take them too literally because I'm trying to draw the electrons as spheres or particles. But for the sake of discussion, let's assume that these are two diagrams, and they both of them represent the collision of two electrons. This is case A, and this is case B. Now, if these electrons are approaching one another, for example, in a particle accelerator experiment, they are colliding, and you close your eyes, and then you open your eyes after they have collided, you see that one electron has gone this way, and the other electron has gone this way. Can you, if you really have closed your eyes and you haven't seen the electrons making the collision, can you distinguish between these two cases? no you cannot this means this is because these electrons are totally identical particles you cannot tell the difference between one electron from the other they are really fraternal twins no difference whatsoever two electrons are totally identical identical to third one so these are indistinguishable or identical particles all right so we believe in this nothing special about it
Now suppose you have two electrons. Again, don't take these pictures too literally because I'm just trying to explain a concept. This electron is given the label 1 and this electron is given the label 2. And the wave function of this electron is psi a and the wave function of this electron is psi b. That is, this is in one state and this is in another state and a and b are the quantum numbers for the electrons n they could be n l ml and the spin so this is the set of quantum numbers for this electron and the set of quantum numbers for this electron so the total wave function of these two identical electrons the total wave function of 1 and 2 both electrons together will be psi the first electron is in the state a and the second electron is in the state B. Agreed? Okay? The first electron in the state A, the second electron in the state B. And these are labels on the electrons. Electron number 1, electron number 2. You alien come to an alien. He challenge our ginti. And he says, no. I would like to call this electron number 2 and I would like to call this electron number 1. So what wave function will he write? He will write the wave function as Psi The first electron is in the state B and the second electron is in the state A. This is the alien's way of writing the electron the two electron wave function. Now when you make measurements on the system it does not matter the way in which you label the electrons does not matter because the electrons are really identical particles so all the measurements that you make with this labeling should be the same as the measurements you make with this labeling now when you make a measurement what are you really measuring you measuring say the location of the two electrons where where are the two electrons located and every measurement requires taking the modulus squared of the wave function <laughs> So, taking the modulus squared of this wave function and taking the modulus squared of this wave function should give you identical results. Okay? Taking the modulus squared of this wave function is identical. There is no difference between this probability density and this probability density because you have just changed the labels. Hence, So this is your physical reality. That is you make a measurement assuming that this is your wave function and you make a measurement assuming this is your wave function. Physical reality will not change by the change of labels. Right? You cannot take away the sweetness of a rose by giving the rose the name of a thorn. The physical reality will remain the same. <laughs> Okay? So now physical reality is unchanged which means that the probability density should remain unchanged or the modulus square remains unchanged. Now when you look at this mathematical expression, what does it tell you about the wave functions? Take the square root of both sides. Psi A 1, Psi B 2 must equal Psi B 1, Psi A Correct? I can have a positive here or a negative. It doesn't matter. Now here comes the strange thing. I have this labeling of states, labeling of wave function for two identical particles. Now I interchange the labels. I put a B here and I put an A here and get this wave function. I interchange. I write, I perform an operation on the labels. 
interchange the labels. I get a new wave function. But interchanging the labels is just a mimicry. It's, it does not have any physical significance. But interchanging the labels can give me a positive sign or a negative sign. Because what the physical reality requires is that the modulus squared has to be equal. Now this is a wave function. It's a total wave function. Which means that if I have a wave function of two particles, 1 and 2, and I interchange the labels, so this new wave function is either the same as the original or it is the negative of the original. This wave function which is the same as the original is called a symmetric wave function. And this wave function which is the negative of the original is called an anti-symmetric wave function. And particles that are called bosons have symmetric wave functions and particles that are called fermions have anti-symmetric wave functions. So what is the difference between the spins in fermions and bosons? What is the difference between the spins and bosons? What is the difference between the spins and bosons? आप साथ साथ बैठे आप बताएं चलो आप बताइए आप पीछे बैठी हैं आप बताएं हमने पढ़ा ये देखा है बहुत सिंपल सी बात याद रखने वाली बात है जो फर्मियोंस हैं उनकी स्पिन हाफ होती है थ्री बाय टू फाइव बाय टू सेवन बाय टू इंटीग्रल मल्टीपल्स ऑफ हाफ और बोसॉन्स की स्पिन इंटीजर्स होती है 0 1 2 3 4 एंड सो ऑन ये दो टाइप्स हैं पार्टिकल्स की स्पिन के हवाले से तो फर्मियोंस हैव एन एंटी सिमेट्रिक वेव फंक्शन एंड बोसॉन्स हैव अ सिमेट्रिक वेव फंक्शन नो इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर फर्मियोंस वी नो दैट सो दे मस्ट हैव एन एंटी सिमेट्रिक वेव फंक्शन सो लेट्स फोकस ऑन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स Electrons are fermions. <clears throat> Suppose this is the wave function for the two electronic system. You interchange the labels. Is that the one who बहुत ही खूबसूरत रिजल्ट इसके बाद आएगा। Interchange the labels, what do you get? Psi, बताइए। A two, psi B one, right? You just interchange one and two. Or you could also write, it doesn't matter which order you write these in. Now is this the same as the original or is it a negative of the original? Negative. Same. Negative. Same. Negative. 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 This wave function is neither even nor odd because you're not getting the original and you're not getting or neither are you getting the negative of the original. नहीं हमने wave function पे देख रहे हैं अब 
ठीक है सो दिस इज नॉट एन अलाउड वेव फंक्शन फॉर टू फर्मियॉन्स लेट्स राइट अनदर वेव फंक्शन लेट्स राइट सो दिस इज आउट ऑफ द विंडो दिस इज नॉट अ लेजिटिमेट वेव फंक्शन फॉर टू इलेक्ट्रॉन और फॉर टू फर्मियॉन्स जिनाब यार बेरी बात सुनो ये एक फंक्शन है ना अगर तो ये ये वाला ये देखो क्वेश्चन इज वेदर दिस इज इक्वल टू द माइनस ऑफ दिस क्या ये इसका नेगेटिव है या नहीं है नहीं है ठीक है यही मैं सिर्फ कह रहा हूं सो दिस इज नॉट अ लेजिटिमेट वे फंक्शन फॉर फर्मी ऑन बिकॉज इट्स नीदर सिमेट्रिक नॉर एंटी सिमेट्रिक वॉट वी रिक्वायर इज एन एंटी सिमेट्रिक वे फंक्शन सो हाउ डू वी कंस्ट्रक्ट एन एंटी सिमेट्रिक वे फंक्शन वी कैन डू दैट क्वाइट इजिली सपोज यू हैव अ फंक्शन दैट इज नीदर इवन नॉर ऑड हाउ डू यू मेक एन इवन और एन ऑड फंक्शन यू टेक कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ द फंक्शन सो लेट्स राइट इन साइड ऑफ दिस फंक्शन लेट्स राइट अनदर फंक्शन साई ए वन साई बी टू माइनस साई बी वन साई ए टू लेट्स राइट दिस फंक्शन विच इज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ वन पार्टिकल फंक्शन लेट्स राइट दिस फंक्शन सिंस दीज आर वेव दीज वेव कैन बी एडेड इन एनी वे यू लाइक सो वी फॉर्म दिस कॉम्बिनेशन बाय आर ओन डिजायर एंड नाउ लेट्स इंटरचेंज द लेबल्स Can you please interchange the labels and see whether you get the original or the negative of the original? वो तो मैं बस समझा चुका हूँ ना interchange करने से फर्क नहीं पड़ना चाहिए। फर्क नहीं पड़ना चाहिए तो फिर वो क्यों नहीं? तो वो wave function legitimate नहीं allowed नहीं है। इस वाले केस में नहीं पहले हमने हमने कहा था या पॉज या वही फंक्शन आना चाहिए या नेगेटिव आना चाहिए ठीक है अब हमें कोई भी नहीं मिल रहा इनमें से हाँ कि ये वाली बात भी गलत हो गई तो जो पुरानी वाली बात ठीक है अब हमने ऐसा वे फंक्शन बनाना है जो एंटी सिमेट्रिक हो या सिमेट्रिक हो देखो हमारे पास प्रूफ ये है ये तो हमने देखा कि एक वेव फंक्शन ही तो मैं समझाने के लिए हमारे पास जो रिलेशनशिप है ना वो ये है ठीक है यू हैव अ टू पार्टिकल वेव फंक्शन अ टू पार्टिकल वेव फंक्शन दैट डिस्क्राइब्स टू पार्टिकल्स मस्ट हैव एट क्वांटम नंबर्स एंड यू इंटरचेंज द लेबल्स यू शुड गेट इधर दिस और दिस Now forget forget this, because here we have taken the liberty of writing this two-particle wave function as a product of two one-particle wave functions. But that's not always correct, because if we take this product of one-particle wave functions and we interchange, we get we neither get a symmetric or an anti-symmetric function. ये एक particular case है कि जब wave function को two वन पार्टिकल वेव फंक्शंस के प्रोडक्ट के तौर पे लिख सकते हैं वो हर वक्त नहीं लिख सकते हम देखते हैं कि इफ यू राइट दिस वेव फंक्शन द टोटल वेव फंक्शन साइड टोटल एज अ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ अ वेव फंक्शन फॉर पार्टिकल वन एंड अ वेव फंक्शन फॉर पार्टिकल टू यू डू नॉट गेट अ सिमेट्रिक और एन एंटी सिमेट्रिक वेव फंक्शन वॉट यू रियली रिक्वायर इज दिस कंडीशन योर टोटल वेव फंक्शन मस्ट बी लाइक दिस It's not always possible to write it as a product of two wave functions. So here you have you construct this function, which is neither this alone, neither this alone. It's a combination. You construct this combination, and now you interchange the labels. What do you get? Psi a two psi b one minus psi b two psi a one. and is this related somehow to this the original yes. 
Yes, it's just the negative of the original. And for completeness sake, let me write this. So now this wave function is anti-symmetric. Therefore, two fermions will obey this wave function. They will have a wave function of this kind. They cannot have a wave function that is just this term alone or just this term alone. It has to be a combination of these terms. So this is the legitimate, the allowed, the permissible wave function for two fermions, for two electrons. All right. Now one corollary. Corollary, samajhte hain? What's a corollary? Nati, natija. Something that is deduced. One corollary. Now this particle one, electron one is in a state A. This electron is in a state B. Now what if both the electrons are in the same state? They have the same set of quantum numbers. Both of them are A. What does this wave function become? Zero. Zero. Theke? When you get an A here and you get an A here, you get this wave function disappears. So when the two particles which are identical, they get this, they are in the same state. That is, you have both of these particles have are in the state A. Then this wave function goes to zero. That is the wave function disappears. Which means two electrons cannot exist in the same state. Two electrons cannot have the same set of quantum numbers. Because then the wave function cannot exist. The wave function just disappears. It goes to zero. Ye baat samajh aayi aapko? नहीं समझ आई यहां तक की बात समझ आ गई तो अब हमने देखना है कि वी हैव टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड दे आर इन द सेम स्टेट व्हाट डज अ स्टेट मीन अ स्टेट मींस अ सेट ऑफ क्वांटम नंबर्स सो ए जो मैंने ए लिखा है इट्स इन फैक्ट अ सेट ऑफ क्वांटम नंबर्स एन एल एम एल एम एस राइट इट्स अ सेट ऑफ क्वांटम नंबर्स and these quantum numbers define the state. They define the wave function. ठीक है? ये बात समझ आई? ये एक short hand a में a में मैंने सारों को कठा करके लिख दिया. This the quantum the set of quantum numbers is a, n, l, m, l, and m, s. Now b is another set of quantum numbers, n dash, l dash, m, l dash, m, s dash. Now, if the sets are equal, that is n equals n dash, l equals l dash, ml equals ml dash, ms equals ms dash, then the two labels will be the same. That is, the two states will be the same of the two electrons. But if you put the same labels into this wave function, you get zero. Up samajai? Ab zero anega kya matlab hai? If the wave function just pops away, it disappears, it disintegrates. The wave function cannot exist. Which means you cannot force two electrons to have the same set of the four quantum numbers. They cannot exist in the same state. They cannot have the same labels. If three quantum numbers are the same, the fourth one must be different. Therefore, if this spin is up, this spin must be down. Therefore, in the hydrogen atom, you are in the 1s orbital. You have two electrons. They have the same value of n. n is 1 for both of them. L is 0 for both of them. ML is 0 for both of them. But this fourth quantum number must be different. Which means that's why when you draw the 1s level, one electron has a spin ms plus half. And the other electron has a spin ms minus half.
सो दिस इज द ओरिजिन ऑफ द पॉली एक्सक्लूजन प्रिंसिपल शाबाश वेरी गुड बोजॉन्स के लिए यहां पे प्लस साइन होगा दिस इज फॉर बोजॉन्स क्योंकि बोजॉन फिर जब उसको इंटरचेंज करेंगे यू गेट दी ओरिजिनल बिकॉज बोजॉन मस्ट है सिमेट्रिक वे फंक्शन For bosons, you have must have a positive sign here. For fermions, you must have a negative sign here. अच्छा एक और बात पूछता हूँ आपसे bosons के लिए तो blackboard छोटे से हैं. Is this an allowed state for bosons? Yes, because you interchange the labels. <coughs> you get psi a two, psi a one, which is the same as the original. So this is an allowed wave function for bosons. You need not make a combination always, and you can also make a combination and put a positive sign in the middle. All right. Now we have ten, fifteen, fifteen minutes. Can you tolerate me? <laughs> really? <laughs> Because look, look at look at our plan. On Wednesday, we're going to have a guest lecture by Professor Asad Abdi. He's going to talk about the P-N junction. Therefore, I have to build the basics for the P-N junction, and that I can do on Monday. I can start on Monday for that. but i would also like to tell you how to calculate the fermi energy all right and i would like to finish off this course by an interesting lecture on not friday next friday we'll have a tutorial or a problem solving session i would like the week then after i would like to tell you a little bit of superconductivity and i would like to have a special lecture by a guest lecturer named sabhi anwar <laughs> and that lecture will have the title what's common between transistors and black holes and what is common is the pauli exclusion principle so it's a pauli exclusion principle that is actually determining how a transistor works how an n type material works and how p type material works and how stars collapse and form black holes how stars collapse and form white dwarfs so this is the scheme of our the remainder of our course so we'll finish off here but with two or three announcements next week mudassar will arrange a problem solving session i've already posted the questions on the on the website you can have a look we'll have one more homework right because you need practice you cannot just sit into the exam or sit into a quiz without doing any practice now we have two assignments that are burdening me and those assignments are the ones in which students have we have spotted students where they have uh, copied there's no need for the video now 